are back with another episode of Things Erin Thinks She Can Do All By Herself. Just kidding. We are back at the shipping containers. We are done with another show for this last weekend. And today is cut day. I'm so excited. So we are going to try a couple different things today. The first being map gas. So if you don't know what this is, it's kind of like a propane, but way hotter. So you can see it says here, M-A-P-P. So it looks like a little propane torch, except this torch itself is actually meant for propane and map gas. If you're trying this at home, don't use a regular propane torch because it's not meant for high heats like this is. Um, so this one is specific for propane and map gas. Um, so this one is gonna burn hotter than a propane and essentially I would really like, yeah, bugs, I would really like this to burn right through the metal. I don't know if it's going to, this container is made of 14 gauge steel, the corrugated part is. And so I don't know that this is going to get hot enough to burn it to where it's going to cut it. It might braise it, but we'll have to find out. Um, like I said, this is like a trial and error. I'm going to see if this works or not because I haven't found anything online about this. However, if this doesn't work, I have my grinder with my grinding wheels. They're just steel grinding wheels. I got like 15 of them on Amazon on Prime Day because they were on sale for a dollar each. And that is what I've typically seen people use when they're cutting things out of these shipping containers. So I know that the grinding wheel is going to work. However, I think it's going to take a really long time. I don't love grinders anyway because they're just way too close to you and I don't love the sparks flying if I don't have to. But I do know, ah, sorry, these bugs are driving me nuts. I do know that that grinding wheel should work. Um, but again, I would love to not spend like 40 hours trying to cut out these walls if I can just burn right through them. The other option would be if this grinder is totally a pain in my butt and I'm just sick of it. I could get an acetylene torch, so that's like bigger containers of gas, bigger than this, and you would mix acetylene gas with oxygen. So it gets significantly more expensive and dangerous, and I don't know that I'm really wanting to try that, but if all this stuff sucks, I'm, I'm down to try it. So we'll see how that goes. I would really love to not spend $400, so if this works great, cool. If the grinder's not awful, I'll stick with that. But I'll let you guys know more as I'm doing it. Um, that's kind of the plan. Start with this map gas if it doesn't go anywhere try that grinder and see which one's going to go faster and then maybe if we need the acetylene torch we'll get one but for now i got my welding stuff on because i know i'm going to need to uh learn to weld at some point on this and i would love not to lose my eyes ears or hands during this project so we're going to just endure my ridiculous looking outfit but that's where we're at it's cutting day and i'll show you guys as we go close map gas not gonna work you can see it heats the metal real well I got this whole circle to like a blazing orange I can see almost through it but it's not cutting whatsoever so needless to say that is not gonna work because it's not gonna cut at the speed I need to do so we're gonna try on to the grinding wheel So the grinding wheel did work, um, but like I anticipated, it grounded down really, really fast and I only got about two feet. So you can see down here, it totally cut through, which is great, except for the fact that this thing's like 40 feet long, top, bottom, sides, and four walls. So that's several hundred feet that I need to cut. And if it's burning through a wheel every two feet, it's gonna get really expensive really fast. So I'm gonna look into better grinding wheels than these ones and see if maybe a more expensive wheel is gonna get me way further. Again, actually it only took about, it only took about three minutes to get through that two foot section. So yes, it'll take me hours to do it that way, but it's honestly not awful, um, but I'm not gonna to wanna to blow through a whole bunch of these. So if I can find a better grinding wheel, that's not gonna, break down as quick. I know they make diamond grinding wheels and they're super expensive, but for 50 bucks, I might try one. Otherwise at that point, if I'm spending a couple hundred dollars on grinding wheels, then I might as well get that acetylene torch and it would probably be way faster. So we're gonna go Google and weigh the pros and cons, I guess a little bit. And then I'll get back to you guys on what works. All right, so we ran into town, got some ice cream because I'm sweating and I don't like doing that. It's like 83 degrees today, which for my area is super warm. Also inside those containers, it's like 100 degrees, so it's really yuck. But 
what I wanted to show you is I actually ran into town, not for ice cream, I ran into town to the hardware store because I was looking for different blades. So this is what I use right now. It's just a typical metal slash stainless steel blade. I'm dripping ice cream everywhere. Anyway, it is just a typical metal slash stainless steel blade. Sorry, break for ice cream. Anyway, this is me, always a shit show. So as I was saying, ew, that is a typical stainless steel slash metal blade. And I was looking at getting a different blade. I know they make diamond blades, but those are typically for masonry and concrete work. And so that was not something that was really gonna make sense for this project. Cause when I was talking to the guy a little bit more, he said, it's basically just gonna be a waste of money for me, uh, especially because I'm going on 14 gauge steel. So. What we did talk about though, is that they have this giant masonry saw. It's for masonry and metalwork. And basically looks like a circular saw, but with a giant cutoff wheel. And the wheels are like 12 inches wide, where the one I'm using right now is four and a half. Theoretically, he said that should slick through it real fast. So it's called a Husqvarna K770. And so when I looked it up online, typically I don't ever rent tools because we own pretty much everything. But masonry work is not something that we really typically do. So I don't actually own this kind of saw. So when I looked it up online, it was like a thousand dollars. Obviously I'm not going to go buy it just for this, but he was renting it. Uh, it's like 30 or $40 for four hours, $75 for 24 hours, and then like 230 for a week. So my plan is tomorrow morning. I have a doctor's appointment in town anyway. And tonight I'm going golfing with my husband. It's three 30 and I got new golf clubs for my birthday. So we have a tea time at 6.30. And so obviously tonight's gonna be kind of shot for working on this. So my plan is to, I've got like a dozen more of these little blades. I'm going to burn through those and see how far I can get with those first. And then my plan is tomorrow when I go to town in the morning to go rent that giant saw, the blades for that are only like $8. So theoretically, even if I need two or three blades on that, I'm spending about $100. And I think I could probably get it done in a couple hours because it should, be super slick it's uh gas powered so you don't need battery or to plug it in or anything like that so i should be able to just crank it out and then just rip through all those walls the only issue i could foresee is if you've ever used a circular saw you know how big and bulky they are this one's a little bit bigger than that even and i'm wondering if i'm going to be able to get close enough to the floors and ceilings and sidewalls to get like a tight cut but Again, if I try it in the morning for like an hour and it's not working and it's not cutting or it's not getting close enough, I'll just return it and I'll just pay for the four hour one, which is like 35, 40 bucks. If it does work, I'm gonna save myself a ton of time and paying for way more grinding wheels and things like that. So that's kind of where we're at right now. I'm gonna go bust through this as much as I can with these little wheels. And then tomorrow I will let you know how that giant saw goes because honestly, I didn't really ever think of that until you mentioned it there so we'll try that one out all right guys so we're back um reciprocating saw saws all originally something i kind of discounted because i used it on my trailer build when i did my mobile studio and it made the metal vibrate too much and it was pinching the blade and so i didn't end up using it but now that i was thinking about it that was flat sheet panels um, so this is corrugated. Obviously it has a little more rigidity. So I thought, well, I should give this a shot. It does work. So if you're looking at doing this, a Sawzall totally does work. This blade is too long. I just didn't have the right kind. The only downside is the blades are super flexible. And so as it's like jumping out of the holes, it's like totally bending and looking like it's gonna snap in half. So I'm gonna run to the hardware store cause I was gonna go there this morning and rent that tool. And I thought, well, let me try the Sawzall first before I go spend some money. So I'm gonna go there, see if I can find a metal blade, because it really didn't chew through this too much. I don't know if you can see that. There. The, the actual blade itself is still pretty fine, and I went about two feet, like I did with the grinding wheel. So if I could find a metal one that actually is a little bit shorter and not as flexible, that could be a good option, but if I can't find one of those, I'll probably just go rent that tool just to try it out and see if it'll work. If not, I'll just go return it in a couple hours if it doesn't work, but. Um, that's where we're at. Okay, so 
let's get a little update here. I went to the store and I was going to rent that large masonry saw. And when I got there, I lifted it and there's no way that I was gonna be able to hold that over my head up on a ladder, nine feet in the air for a 40 foot span. It was not gonna happen. I'm pretty strong and that was just, it's a really, really heavy saw. I don't know that it would have gotten close enough to the floor anyway. So I wasn't gonna waste my money and my time with that. They happen to have an acetylene torch in stock, which is surprising because our hardware store usually has nothing or it's like super expensive. And I went back in my car and I Googled it and there was uh, none in stock anywhere in the bigger cities around me. And also it was cheaper than like the big stores, which is very rare. That like literally never happens. So that's what we did is we went and bought one and we're gonna figure it out. I'm gonna YouTube it. So it's this one. I know the box is upside down, but I got the Lincoln Electric Porta Torch. It came, it, I laughed because it says everything you need to start, except for the gas. You don't get the gas or the oxygen. Obviously they can't ship it that way. I get that. But it's everything you need except for the actual combustibles. So it came with some canisters and I was looking it up and Northern Tool is like 45 minutes from me and that was the only place that I thought had refills. Then I called our lumber yard in town because normally I don't ever go there because it's way more expensive than like our regular lumber yard. They actually had refills right there in stock. So it saved me a 45 minute drive. It was like $92 to refill these two little containers, one with gas and one with oxygen. Um, so that got quite pricey. The kit itself, I think I paid $350 after tax. So I'm like $450 into it after I got the refills. But there is a place in Duluth that actually, it's like a welding um, company. And I think if I were to go straight to them for any other refills, that it's going to be significantly cheaper because it's straight like to a gas company. So for the sake of just trying to get this done today and like ease of not driving an hour and a half round trip, I just went to our hardware or our lumber store and got it there. So my pretty tanks are now swapped in for these old ones, but I don't care because as long as it works, it'll be great. So I'm going to unbox this thing and then I'll show you kind of the setup. And I'm probably going to hop on YouTube right now and try to figure out how to run this thing because obviously I've never, I've never even seen one before today, much less actually used one. I, I get the concept. I get the science behind it. It should be pretty self-explanatory. Otherwise they wouldn't just sell them to regular people. But that's where we're at right now. So I'm gonna let you know how difficult this is to put together and if we're gonna blow up or not. All right, here we are. So it only took me like 15 minutes and honestly, the hardest part was figuring out which regulator valve went on which because after I smarted myself, obviously that one's bigger. So uh, once I figured that out, we were good to go. This tank over here is the acetylene gas and that one is the oxygen. So the fuel is coming in the red line and the green line is for the oxygen. Comes in and it seems like a super straightforward setup. Like I said, it's, it's Lincoln Electric. They're a reputable brand. It's not like the chintziest of things that you could buy. So I think it should work just fine. So. The setup is pretty simple. It comes in here, goes through the hoses into the handheld part where right here is the regulator for the mixing. Then after it mixes in that little chamber, you have that trigger there that basically shoots it out where the flame is coming out. Um, and it's got the igniter and all that. So I am gonna Google tonight quite a bit before I use it because my husband said that he wants to go, his dad just bought a side by side. And so we're gonna go the back way up to this little middle of nowhere on a lake restaurant in the side by side. So that'll be kind of fun. But I am gonna Google and the only thing I don't have here is water. So um, if you've ever checked for gas leaks, you know you need to use like soap and water to see if there's any bubbles coming out. If there is, it means there's a gas leak. Obviously I need to check that before I start this thing. So I'm gonna take this home tonight, check for any gas leaks, make sure it's all set up, um, watch a few videos. Like I said, it was super straightforward. It seems like it should be pretty dang easy. They even gave you a pair of glasses and when I first tried them on, I was like, these are chintzy, but actually they're, they're pretty nice ones. So um, that's kind of where we're at right now. Here's to give you a look at what 14 gauge steel is. It is pretty damn thick. Like it doesn't look like it given how much I can flex the wall, but it's pretty thick. 
So that's where I was running into these problems because you can see the red one there is the other container next to it. So this corrugation, when it goes out like that, matches the other one where that corrugation's also coming out. So they're like literally right next to each other. There was no room to fit a saw in there. It did work, however, when they were coming in because the other one also went in. So there was a decent amount of space behind there that I could cut. So basically every other corrugation I was able to fit the saw in and then I would have to use the grinder for the opposites. So my thinking is, I know it's upside down, but this thing says it cuts one inch and welds one sixteenth. So I guess I could use this as a welder too if I needed to, which is kind of cool. It comes with a welding tip and everything. So this might be a dual purpose kind of situation for what I need to do, but um, it cuts up to an inch. And this is obviously like a three eighths inch kind of situation. If I got really good, not saying I will, but if I got really good, I could almost cut through both sheets of steel at the same time and then just leave a little bit together on these tops so that the whole thing doesn't come crashing down and then go around on the other side from the other container and cut that one out separate. But I don't know if I'm gonna do that. That might just be ballsy. I, I like to do things as fast as I can, but I don't know if that's gonna be the smartest. We'll see how it goes tomorrow when I test it. If it's slick like butter and I can just go cruise through these things, I might try that where I get through both sheets at the same time. But otherwise, that's the setup. It's pretty slick. It has this like little carrying handle thing, which is pretty heavy. It's got the little reel for the hose. It's all, it's all in one setup. And my thought process is if I ever wanted to upgrade to bigger containers, I can still use this whole setup and I could buy two bigger canisters and put them on like a dolly kind of situation and have a total portable cutter welder, which is why it's called Portaforge. So that's where we're at. We tried all this stuff. We're moving on to the big guns and I sure hope it works.